Tonight, we're working the latest developments as a budget battle brews at the State House. House Speaker Gordon Fox says Governor Lincoln Chafee's two-tiered sales tax plan is unacceptable and would be rejected by lawmakers as it is right now. We were there yesterday as hundreds showed up to testify and protest the plan, so we wanted to know what happens next. Joining us now with a closer look is Eyewitness News State House Insider John Laughlin. Now, you were part of the General Assembly for a long time. You know how things go. you kind of surprised that uh, Gordon Fox came out. Is this dead in the water now? Well, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say dead in the water. I'd say dead on arrival, more likely. Uh, this General Assembly, and this House in particular, has certainly shown no appetite for raising taxes given the economic hardship our state's experiencing. But you have to remember that the rank and file state representatives and state senators have to stand for re-election next year. The governor has a four-year term, so these reps will have to have a face of very angry electorate right around the corner. Uh, that in and of itself is enough reason to listen to the outpouring of opposition to the tax increases contained in this budget. We get a lot of people to say that the Speaker of the House is the most powerful person in the state. For a statement like this, it, would he have done that if Chafee was a Democrat? I'm not sure he would have. I mean, typically, what, uh, that's the unprecedented part of this story is, you know, I can't remember a Speaker coming out this strongly against a governor's budget this early in the process. Now, typically, the House will, you know, by and large, accept the governor's budget and make the changes they deem appropriate. But for the Speaker of the House to come out this strongly against the budget about a month or so after it's been introduced, that's got to have the Chafee administration on its heels right about now. You know, in fairness, I think that Speaker Fox wanted to have at least one hearing on the tax increase articles before making this public pronouncement. Now, if you read Speaker Fox closely, it appears that he has been criticizing some parts of this, but he left the door open right. for possible other taxes, too. Yeah, I mean, he certainly left the door open, but, uh, you know, believe it or not, it's still very early in the budget process from the House perspective. And, and this is a General Assembly that, again, has shown no appetite for raising taxes, but has shown little or no appetite for spending cuts either. And as you know, there's only two sides to that le ledger. Either you cut spending or you raise taxes. Now, the compromise that, that you talk about may be their way out. They may go for a plan that lowers and broadens. In other words, dropping the rate, but including more items. But what people need to always keep in mind is if the end result is more money coming into state coffers, then, you know, it's a tax increase. What's the old saying? You can't fight City Hall, but right. maybe, maybe you can fight the State House of what has happened uh, yesterday. Yeah, and that was, uh, that was unusual, and it does have an impact to see that many people flood the State House virtually all on the same side of an issue. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's not the hundreds that show up to a committee hearing. It's the 14,000 in the case of a state representative or 28,000 in the case of a state senator who called that particular legislative district home. They have the greatest impact. You know, the, the late Massachusetts Congressman and Speaker of the House, Tip O'Neill, said it, all politics is local. And elections are decided by the folks in the district, not the folks that uh, testify before committees. So that's why it's so important to reach out to your reps and senators and make sure you let them know how you feel. John Laughlin, thank you very much for your Thanks, insight. Mike. Thank you. Coming up, uh, new at 6.